Well, hello and uh, welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Now, I thought uh, I might put uh, put a bit of radio content on here, a bit of amateur radio content as a, as a bit of a novelty, really, <laughs> uh, the way it's been going recently. OK. Um, I uh, We were talking uh, up at the club about uh, these terminated, terminated wire antennas. And uh, one of the fellas up there said, oh, yeah, we got one of those. Um, uh, it was a commercial terminated dipole. Um, and uh, terminated dipoles are dipoles that will have a terminating resistor um, at the center. Uh, usually folded dipole, and it will have the, uh, the matching transformer on the bottom. <clears throat> if you can imagine at the feed point. Then the dipole goes out like that from the feed point, up and then back like that, and it terminates to a resistor. And they compared one of these commercial antennas uh, with a G5RV, and the G5RV uh, was considerably better. Um, now, why people use these terminated dipoles, the, mil the military tend to use them, and um, I suppose emergency services probably use them. Um, you can buy them commercially, and you just string it up. You don't need to match it. You can use it on any frequency between sort of 1 or 2 and, uh, and 30 megs, and uh, it won't damage the radio. You get a decent match, and, and, to, uh, uh, and they work. Um, they don't work as well as a, uh, a properly matched antenna, but they do, uh, they do work, and as a compromised antenna, um, they can be uh, they can be quite effective. So I thought, well, <coughs> just for fun, as I've got this uh, this Ted Mtron uh, selectable unun, you know, it does nine to one, sixteen to one, and I can't remember now. What is it? Sixteen to one, nine to one, and four to one. I would just I'd just try it. So this resistor here is. Believe it or not, it's got to go on a heatsink, but believe it or not, it's rated at 600 watts. Uh, the breakdown voltage is 12,000 volts, and the resistance is 470 ohms. I couldn't get a 450 ohm resistor, uh, which is what 9 times 50 would be. Remember, 9 to 1. Um, but it's close enough, because, you know, um, if you're talking about the difference between 450 ohms and 470 ohms, it's 20 ohms. Divide by 9, you know, what's that? couple of ohms. So it's not going to make a great deal of difference. So basically what a what a terminated dipole is, is this arrangement, uh, this would actually be a balun instead of an unun, but basically it's the same, it's just an impedance uh, impedance transformer that's changing 450 ohms to 50 ohms at the feed point there. The, uh, the SO239 here. Um, as it's configured at the moment, this is a dummy load. Simple as that. With the wires this long, this is a dummy load. If each of these wires were, I don't know, 60 feet long, so they folded, they went out from here, and then they went out, and then came back and onto there, and again on the other side, comes out and folds back to there. I'm looking through the viewfinder to do this, that's a little tricky. Um, then that would be a terminated folded dipole, and it would radiate. Now, um, these antennas are called travelling wave antennas, and the reason for that is that the power from the transmitter goes along the wires, and generates an electromagnetic field as it does that, but it terminates into this resistor, so it doesn't reflect back down the wires. Power is dissipated in the resistor. Whereas in a, uh, in a matched antenna, without a terminating resistor, the energy would travel along the radiating element. Remember, this could be many, uh, many uh, um, tens of feet long. This bit of wire and that bit of wire. As it goes, <clears throat> as it goes along the wire, it gets to the end and then it comes back, and then it goes back again and back again, and it dissipates that energy as an electromagnetic field. So, with a travelling wave antenna, it goes around here into the resistor. That's it. Radiates but it doesn't go backwards and forwards and dissipate all of its energy as an electromagnetic field. That's why they're, uh, they're not as efficient, but as a compromise, as I say, they're, they're not bad. So <clears throat> it will actually radiate something. And um, I've played around with a uh, terminated delta loop, and I've actually worked internationally with it. It'd be interesting to compare that with a, um, a sort of properly matched or resonant antenna at the same site, just to see what the difference in signal strength is. But uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm just going to configure this, not today, but as a, as a loop. 
um, and compare it with a tuned mag loop. Of course, I don't expect it to be anywhere near as good, but I want to see how bad it is compared with it, you know, so because it's fiddly tuning loops. Uh, so I'm going to get a relative field strength meter, make a loop up that's exactly the same size as a mag loop, measure the field strength, relative field strength between the two with the same power on the same frequency applied. That's what I've got in mind anyway. Uh, okay, so just for a bit of fun, let's just see how this looks. Now, if you saw the video I did with the uh, with the Unun, -un, um, it's not a very flat response. So I think um, you know if you're going to make a ballon, uh, it would probably be a little bit better. I wish this focus would settle down. Come on, settle down. Okay, so if I just move that there slightly, and I can put the U kits antenna analyzer. Uh, now, can you see that? Can you see that? I don't know if that's focused or not, actually. So I'm getting on a bit, you see, I could be a bit out of focus. There you go. Okay. Righto. I think that's reasonably well focused. As you can see, um, here it's saying uh, CF, which is center frequency. That's 7.093 megahertz. It's showing an SWR of 1, 1 1.0, and an impedance of 45 ohms. So on 40 meters, I could stick the transmitter into that. It's not going to worry. As I say, I could extend those wires, uh, I don't know, 40 feet on each side. Uh, it's still not going to mind. Um, I won't need to. I won't need to match it. I could even make it longer than that. And the longer the wires, the, the less of a dummy load the resistor uh, becomes because the, uh, the, the, uh, the further the energy travels along the wires the more of that energy is dissipated as an electromagnetic field if you see what I mean. Okay, um, <coughs> oh, one thing I didn't mention and, th and that was that the terminated antennas um, are preferred by people like the military and those sort of places because you can string it up you don't need to match it it's not going to damage the radio and it will radiate a signal it's also very good for frequency agility so if you've got if your transmitters hopping around in frequency it's always presented with the correct load impedance uh, without returning um, now so on 40 meters SWR 1 impedance 45 ohms so if we go to 80 meters so now we've got a center frequency of 3.6 megs. Um, SWR is 1.2. Again, that's, that's acceptable. That's not going to hurt your radio. And the impedance is 50 ohms. Um, with solid state PAs, it's often better just to go for the 50 ohm impedance. And if the SWR is a little bit out, um, I think, the, uh, I think the, um, the PAs prefer the 50 ohms. Um, now, if we go to... I really hope that's in focus because it's a very small viewfinder and I'll uh, I'll be annoyed if I have to do this again. That will be an 8 out of 10 on the mythometer. I've got to go up the club in a minute. Saturday morning here in Perth. And the Hills Amateur Radio Group opens up about midday. Okay, so 10 megs. We've got SWI is 1.2, impedance is 39 ohms. On 20 meters, we've got 14.2 megs, we've got 1.5 to 1 SWR, and the impedance is 30 ohms. So I think I'll be inclined to try that and just uh, um, just have a look at what the SWR looked like on the radio, see if it looked unhappy. Um, 21 megs. SWO is 2 and it's 26 ohms. And I think this is pretty much the, the sort of results we've got with, um, uh, with the un, -un uh, terminated into a, into, a, uh, into a pop. So I suppose, it would, I suppose it would be the same really, wouldn't it, when you, when you consider it's a, um, uh, a resistor that uh, it's being terminated into. So on 10 metres, 2.6 and 44. So I'd say for 40 metres and, and uh, 80 metres, this thing would be fine. Um, <clears throat> the resistor, of course, uh, will be fine um, anywhere, on, uh, anywhere on HF. Um, the, um, the restricted uh, bandwidth is coming from this thing here. 
So that resistor, just turn that off. This resistor, it's a uh, it's a special non-inductive resistor. This resistor here, um, and it's made for um, pulse pulse applications. So it's a special uh, special non-inductive non-inductive resistor. Okay, well, uh, I hope you found that uh, hope you found that interesting. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and um, I'll. Uh, I'll catch you next time.